Hello, and welcome to another episode of Myths and Stories, a Destiny 2 lore podcast. Uh, we have returned after our week break, uh, and we are turning our attention to the uh, most recent cutscene that dropped, of course, while we were away, because why wouldn't it? Because why uh, wouldn't it? <laughs> in game that is explaining the origins of the witness. Dude, this thing, this is big, man. This it like, is. Uh, I, I to to me, this is like everything I've thought is wrong now. Like I need to rethink every point of view I've had of this witness since the beginning. Like this this scene changes everything. I'm so excited for this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things now that we can look at through a different lens, through a different perspective, and uh, hopefully glean a little more info or a little a uh, little solider information. So, what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna go through each of the uh, dialogues that Asa gave us um, for all the weeks of the season leading up to the cutscene. And then we're going to read the dialogue from the cutscene um, and maybe interject here and there. Uh, and then kind of theorize on that, see, see what questions that brings up. Uh, and then we're going to take that new understanding and we're going to go back to the unveiling lore book. Uh, because that deals very much with the gardener and the winnower and, and all of that. And try and maybe... Uh, I don't know if understand is the right word, but try and see if we can get new information or, or now that we have this new perspective, maybe understand more about the things written in unveiling. And we're going to see where it goes. Yeah. This is going to be a, this is going to be kind of an eye opener, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, I guess, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Um, each week, uh, of this season, there's been a event uh, that you you go through um, a deep dive and you get to the bottom of the ocean and you collect some taken uh, egregore that's uh, and correct me if I'm wrong myth but it's growing naturally down there at the bottom of the methane ocean right see yeah seems to be uh, a as a byproduct of the whole planet being taken, like taken. Or, or you know remove whatever the witness did to it to remove it from our space yep um, and, and i guess yeah. saying taken egregore is that kind of like a is that kind of like a like a like saying atm machine like egregore <laughs> is already of the darkness so like to say it's taken like i've i've double taken it or something anyway egregore yeah. is growing at the bottom of the ocean in a coral form and this coral is being used to kind of strengthen the uh psychic bond that asa and sloan have uh, that they developed while while Titan was taken, where wherever the Titan wherever Titan went, uh, Asa and and Sloane created this bond, uh, and with this bond, Asa is able to talk through Sloane and actually have some dialogue, so, some some dialogue with us, um, and it's it's been an, it's been kind of like hazy this whole time. So each week you get like a little bit more of this this message, which. Um, I, 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 I kind of had like a, a personal theory on it. I was curious if the message was, um, and myth, maybe, maybe you'll have a, since you've, uh, obviously done all the, the collecting of data here, but maybe you might have a better, um, perspective of this. I always thought when I got to the end of these messages that like, maybe they're like the messages that you see when you're going through the Valo Disciple raid. Where it's a word, they're all in each each word is individualized, and they're all like the period, father period, and period, mother period. But then, like, if you read them, uh, um, if you read every other word, it actually formed a more cohesive thought rather than reading the sentence as like one word after another. And I was curious, uh, do these scenes um, have that level of depth to them? Or are each of these scenes just kind of like a an individual like this is a this is an individual thought in each scene? Yeah, so I haven't discovered any kind of like coded message in the um in the the dialogues. And we know a bunch of However, us do a good code. 
They do. So it doesn't mean it's not there. I just, I haven't seen it if it is. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. However, I do think that um, some of the dialogues we get earlier in the weeks actually give us details about the witness cutscene that the cutscene doesn't include. Okay. So right. there's there's a few things that I'll note when we get get to those portions of like, even though the cutscene doesn't say this, Asa said it earlier in relation to the same thing, and like maybe that means X Y Z. Okay. Um, well, let's dive so, into it then. Yeah. Because this whole season is season of the dive, and so we're doing we're still doing the the deep dive. <laughs> we're puns. still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're bad. We're bad at this myth. <laughs> We're real bad. Yeah, we are. Uh, so we're going to start with the first week, week one. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to read the dialogue from Asa as well as the dialogue from Sloan, because I think there are some things Sloan says here um, separate from Asa that uh, are kind of interesting to note. These these are like the dialogues that you get like after you, after you've talked, after you've heard what Asa has to say, you kind of like go back to the, the little um, projector and, Sloan has words with you? Are those, are those yes. with you? Okay. Yep. Uh, only on the first week do did I include those, because okay. in the later weeks, it's more introspective to Sloan, where in the first week, I think it gives us a little more context around some of the other characters. Yeah, a lot of a lot of hers, I felt were very much like uh, she's she's looking back on like her time while have while while have been taking. Well, how would you word that? While she was missing, <laughs> while she was in my A, right? Guess. Yeah. Um, but she's kind of like looking back on that and going, you know, while this was happening, I, I, it was the mission, and I, I had to complete the mission, and that's that's always been her thing is the mission, the mission, the mission, the mission, and so yeah, I, it, it's, I've never really found a correlation between the two, but again, I, I, you know me, my squirrel brain, you, you remember way better than I do. Well. Say, I've got all of it written here, so we can go through it together. Sweet. Uh, So yeah, week one, the statement that we get from Asa is, An oasis in the desert, seeds of hope, buried beneath the sands. Nomads, wanderers, travelers, their journey comes to an end. The first to be claimed by the deep. The first to fall victim to the witness. And that's the end of her message. Okay. I'm already, again, thinking of the cutscene. I already see where this is going. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, Sloan, following that, says, I... So you heard all that, huh? Hard to believe, but it's not just noise. I can understand pieces of it through Asa. Sivu's thirst for battle. The Witness's cold rage. The Taken's enmity. It's all in there. I started hearing it when my arm got this new paint job. And that's the end of the relevant bit of Sloane's dialogue. Okay. So to pause briefly, we have Asa talking about uh, a desert and wandering nomads um, who find an oasis, uh, a seed of hope buried beneath the sands, uh, marking the end of their journey, the end of their wandering, presumably. Uh, And she's also labeled these people, these nomads, to be the first claimed by the deep and the first victims of the witness. All all of that is super important to keep in mind when yeah. when we when we get to the cutscene. So that's yeah, I'm again, I'm following one one I'm one to what <laughs> I'm on the same wavelength, <laughs> wavelength as you are, myth. I'm following one to one. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Um now with Sloane, I think it's interesting here. I she's kind of by being partly taken, she's kind of like tuned in to darkness radio yeah uh, yeah that's the way she kind of explains it too is like yeah. she's picking up their 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 frequencies and she's kind of understanding a little bit here and there so that's how shivu um is able to communicate with her is kind of through those frequencies and how she can sense shivu's constant like bloodlust. um 
But what I thought was really interesting here and what we saw a little glimpse of in Lightfall with uh, the one scene between the witness and Callus, where the witness like just looks at Callus, you know, off screen looks at Callus in a way that makes Callus just like tremble in fear. I was going to say, was that uh, the one where he starts like bleeding from his, his yeah. forehead and eyes and stuff? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, she says that she can feel through this darkness radio. Uh, the witness's cold rage. And in all of the portrayals we've seen of the witness, for the most part, they seem to be a very calm, collected, oh, yeah. uh, in control of the situation kind very, of very calculated persona. Yeah. yeah. And this seems, and like I said, we've seen it leak out once or twice in a, in a scene or two, but this seems that, that Sloan is tapped into like underneath all of that very, uh, yeah, in control exterior is just this burning hatred or anger that has presumably persisted for millennia at this point. Like like I said, thinking thinking of that and thinking of the cutscene, it's I'm starting to understand a little bit. Yeah. So uh, moving on to week two, the dialogue from Asa is this: a city of light, a flourishing garden, a silent god, withholds a deeper truth, questions unanswered. Longing unfulfilled, the sky darkens as a new journey begins. And that's the end of that dialogue. I, I, she, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, what do you call that? Um, I, I guess I don't want to jump the gun or, or <laughs> yeah, you, uh, that's that's what. Like, I, I I'm following. <laughs> yes, I'm following myth. <laughs> you know this. I know this. I don't want to like kill the lead right now and be like bam. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit patiently for now. Okay. Okay. So I uh, the things that we can take away from this: a city of light, capital L. Um, so we can assume maybe these wanderers built a city. They have with with light power in some way. I. Uh, Calls it a flourishing garden. Remember that. That's important. Um, a silent god. Yeah, the the silent god we know is the traveler. Yep. Uh, questions I speak, unanswered. I speak for the traveler. I never said it spoke to me. Right. Uh, questions unanswered. The sky darkens as a new journey begins. The the nomads are con- are starting a new journey somewhere. Um. Week three's dialogue says this shrouded in darkness a promise of something more two halves of a whole long divided a schism between them reunited a glimpse beyond to the beginning and that's the end of that dialogue I'm I'm still following. I'm still one to one with you, Myth. I'm good. <laughs> so uh, I am going to come back to this one specifically after we talk about the cutscene proper. So awesome. Uh, I was hold excited. on this that. Is, <laughs> this is really coming together now of what's yeah. happening. Like I've never since I've never actually taken the time to like put all the different weeks together. And again, my squirrel brain forgets what the hell happened in week one. By the time I get to like the next five minutes. Um, this is actually like really helpful because cut scenes to me, like that's, if I have some type of like scene or something to follow, I, 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 my brain latches onto that really well. And so now that scene is real. And I guess that's the other thing too, is that scene is really fresh in my mind. And so like hearing these dialogues and thinking of the scene, this is, this is really starting to, I'm, I'm following real well. Yeah. So week four, this is the last week before the cut scene. Dialogue says this. Anathema. Calamity. That which cannot, must not come to pass. A wordless denial. A fleeing God. Betrayal. 
and escape the pursuit for the final shape. And that's the end of that dialogue. Yep, still following. Still good. So to offer a definition here, um, anathema is, can be defined as in two different ways. Uh, so it can be defined as something or someone that one vehemently dislikes. So the you know the the antithesis of your being it is some someone that you just you absolutely despise or was, a thing that you was, absolutely despise. Was there something with? For some reason, I'm remembering anthem and a theme. Is that is that wish dragon shit? Yeah, anthem and a theme is the uh, the oh whatever mine. S- yeah, oh noun mine. Uh, okay. To exert control over something. Is that control being exerted because of hatred? It's they definitely have the same root. I don't know if it's intentional for those two things to be sim- as similar as they are, or if it's just because they operate off the same root word. Okay. If it, you know, it just so happens to be like, that way. Like uh, I don't know. Yeah the the root word idea. I, yeah. Okay. I'm following. So. The other uh, definition of anathema is a more religious one. Okay. Um, And that is a formal curse by a pope or council of the church often used to excommunicate a person or denounce a doctrine. Now that sounds more wish dragony. Yeah. (laughs) That that to me is where the wish dragony portion kind of kicks in. Okay. Yeah, a type of curse. Yeah. Um, now I don't know that wish dragons necessarily excommunicate the wisher, I, but uh, I wonder if it's they... like not not an excommunicate in a way of like get away from me, but more of an excommunicate of like they have complete control over that being's existence. That now. could be. So like that, that being be. has been excommunicated from I don't know free will. Yeah. Or or from determining their own fate. Yeah. Or yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. No, I think I think that would work quite well. Um, so yeah, so I uh, some calamity, something that must not come to pass. That uh, is this, you know, this denounced doctrine or this vile thing um, that's being denied—a wordless denial, a fleeing god, uh, and then the pursuit of the final shape. So, with those four weeks dialogues in mind i'm going to go through the entirety of the dialogue from the origins of the witness cutscene. i uh, if you have not seen this cutscene, go watch it it is available it's on it's it's really really well done the visuals of it lend to the story being told um, i'm going to reference pictures as as you know they were relevant to the lines we're reading but if you can watch it that's the thing to do. Uh, it's up on Bungie's YouTube. I'm I'm pretty sure. I know, uh, I know they linked to uh, uh, on their Twitter uh, in the in this in the most recent TWAB. I'm pretty sure they linked it on there too. Yep, yep. So absolutely go see it if you haven't. I but we're gonna go over the entirety of the dialogue in it. So this is a spoiler for it if you if you haven't seen it. Um. So without further ado, the cutscene says this. Before you can confront the witness, you must understand it. The witness's first victims were once like you. This is where we see a picture of a desert and uh, people in, you know, like desert robes and like head wraps and and things. Uh, Which presumably would be those nomads that she talked about in the first week. Yep. So the witness's first victims were once like you, struggling for survival, bolstered by hope until their hopes became reality. And during this line, we literally see the traveler rising up out of the sands in front of this group of nomadic people. Which when I when I first saw that I thought like the traveler was like growing, 
but I, I yeah, there's I think there's that some you and question I talked about there. it, and like I think you you mentioned the idea of it like being unearthed, almost like an like an ancient, <laughs> almost like a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, I I do. So it, it's a little ambiguous here. Um, now if we go back to the first week dialogue, though. Yep. Uh, it says. An oasis in the desert, seeds of hope buried beneath the sands, That's which I think thing. lends, yeah, I think lends to the traveler was here. I, I, I don't know if it was trapped and they dug it up or if it was buried and their presence awoke it and it, it rose up on its own. It, it's not a hundred percent clear. So, so many more questions than answers. on that one. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, these wander this this nomadic tribe in the desert discovered the traveler uh looking for you know essentially I think just looking for an oasis, looking for something that would make their lives easier. Sure. And then this being came before them. And so the cutscene continues. They called it the gardener, their deity of life. It ushered them into a golden age, and for eons they prospered. But their newfound god never spoke to them. It lavished them with gifts, but not with guidance. And now we're seeing images of uh, a city being built up around the traveler. Uh, and the we can see now that the architecture of the city is quite familiar uh it looks very similar to some of the architecture that we see as we are progressing through the opening encounter of uh vow of yep. vow the disciple uh and as the city is growing we also see pyramid ships uh, starting to appear in areas of the city and then eventually front and center also being built as the city is advancing. So this just kind of confirms this is the origin point of the pyramid ships. Yep. And we have also this line of, you know, their newfound God never spoke to them. It lavished them with gifts, but not with guidance. That goes back to uh, week two where Asa says, a city of light, capital L, a flourishing garden, a silent God withholds a deeper truth, questions unanswered, longing unfulfilled. This, so, this to me is the traveler. Like every, yes. everything about this screams traveler. And, and yeah. again, kind of, uh, I'm jumping ahead again, thinking traveler, and then these people call it the gardener. Mm -hmm. I, I keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Yeah. I, I think there's a connection to be made there. That's a pretty we we've kind of had this connection that we've that we've thought about multiple times, but I, I think it's a little more concrete now. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So uh the cutscene continues. It lavished them with gifts, but not with guidance. And though they lived in paradise, they came to crave a greater purpose. They desired meaning, structure, a winnower to shape the garden. Their scholars discovered that the gardener shared a connection with another entity among the stars. And they called it the veil. And now it shows a picture of the veil as we know it. Boom. Witness mic drop. Or uh, wanderer <laughs> people, mic drop. I I don't I don't know. Like this, this was like a huge moment in this scene that I was just like, "What the fuck is happening? <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore about anything. My life is becoming unwound. What is happening?" Yeah, this was a this was a big deal. Like to to come to this point in the scene and just be like, "Okay, so they are talking about a gardener and a winnower." I, I'm I'm starting to think that the veil has it is the winnower now. Like 
Okay, I, again, I know I'm jumping the gun here, Myth, but no, those, I got, these gotta are, keep, these gotta are good keep thoughts. These, gotta keep these terms and thoughts together. So yep. we have a, a giant ball thing that has just been unearthed from the desert by this wandering nomad people, and it's it starts shitting shit out to them and like, hey, here's some fun stuff, but never telling them what to do or where to go with this stuff. Just kind of letting them play with it. And then seeing what happens. Um, so keep that, yep. keep kind of those thoughts in mind too. And they call it the gardener and they call it the garden. And then this other thing shows up and it's like, whoa, that thing's bad. And it's like, wants to do something that isn't gardening. And they're going to call that thing the winnower. So again, that and that thing being the, the veil. Um, well, so let's, let's back up a step there. Okay. I'll back up a so step. I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit. They never call the veil the winnower. Oh. It says that they were desiring a winnower to oh, shape the garden. Oh, shit. So, okay. I took it as they were calling that thing the winnower. Nope. No, oh, we're the, okay. the line specifically says uh, they desired meaning, structure, a winnower to shape the garden. Okay. Their this scholars. Is, this is interesting now. Yeah. This is real interesting. Okay. So uh, then it, it continues to say this. Their scholars discovered that the gardener shared a connection with another entity among the stars. They called it the Veil. And when they found it, they arrived to claim it. They already knew much about the light, how it could bend the laws of the universe and create life. But they came to realize that it could bring ruin just as easily. The cosmic events that it set in motion could wipe out entire civilizations in a heartbeat without reason. And we're going to pause again. The pictures that they're showing uh, here is um, a mural, very, very similar to the mural actually in like Niamuna, yeah. uh, or that you can see in some of the various places in uh, in Rulk's ship was, in Val. I was going to say, is are these similar to the ones in Val? They have like the kind of yep. like the, I don't know what to call it other than like the little stick thingy, little yep. staff thingy that you see in all the pictures that has all the little forks and stuff in it. Yeah, so the, this mural um, kind of changes as, as the narration goes on, but it shows essentially a bunch of natural disasters happening. And then eventually um, it shows people holding those like, what, I, what I'm going to refer to as light suppressing stabs. I was, was going to ask, is this, are these the light suppressor shit that we deal with on Neobuda? It has that same aesthetic where it's like the yep. branching, so, which we also saw it in Vow with Rulk yep. and like Rulk's, uh, his father's glave that you can see at the, the final boss room um, has that same start, everything's starting to come together, branchingness myth. to it. So I, so to, to back up to what was actually said here outside of just the mural. So they, they discovered that the gardener has a connection of some sort to this other thing that they're calling the veil and they leave to go find it, or at least there's an expedition of some of them to go find it. Um, and this goes back to week two from Asa who said, you know, a silent God withholds a deeper truth, questions unanswered, longing unfulfilled. I think that is literally the people asking the traveler, asking their God, what is our purpose? Yeah, like absolutely. What essentially, like literally, what is what is the meaning of our life? Yeah, like thank you for all this gift stuff that you did, but um, why? Like, right? What, what's what's the point? Like, we've been nomad wanderers for God knows how long. We come across you, this this giant shiny ball that grants us all this crazy shit that we would never had access to before why like is this is this paradise is this heaven like what 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 is this like what is our purpose now that we're just kind of given everything that we want and we have to also remember the span of time here yeah. so asa eons. says eons uh 
So the definition of eon is literally an immeasurable or indefinitely <laughs> long period of time. <laughs> Thanks, Math. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, so much time has passed that it's immeasurable. Um, now, technically, if you want to look, uh, an eon is classified as uh, 0.5 billion years or more. Okay. <laughs> so that's a, that's a pretty long time. At least half a billion but anywhere between half a billion and infinity, essentially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's>, uh, yeah. <laughs> what was what was there? There's. I'm reminded of a saying here of about infinity of of you are always closer to zero than you ever will be to infinity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so these these people have had the light and have built their city and have lived in their golden age for unmeasurable amounts of time we're, I, we're just gonna call it forever like, yeah, essentially that's, 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 it, that's it might what, as well be yeah that's what i'm gonna call it is they've they've lived this way forever now the question becomes i i don't think that they were at the where where they were asking like why have you risen us from nomads because there it's been so long no one probably even remembers right. what that life was like yeah i i think the question at this point is like we have we have made every possible advancement we can yeah like we we've experienced we have everything. literally yeah we've reached the end yeah we we've we've done everything it is possible for us to do by virtue of your power by virtue of the light now what, what? <laughs> what is next like what now, what is the reason <laughs> yeah. exactly what is the reason for us to be here now that we have experienced all there is to experience. That's mind blowing to think of a, of an entire civilization where everything in it has experienced everything that they could ever experience ever. Th th these, these are, these are not terms that like the human brain can truly comprehend things like an eon, things like forever, things like infinity. The, the human mind can't comprehend that. And so for this entire civilization to have had every single experience that's possible to ever happen and, and even, even possibly impossible to happen because we're talking about paracausal abilities here. We're talking about the light as a paracausality. It's bending the rules of physics for the civilization to experience things that they could never have experienced. So to get through all of that and to get to the end and be like, now what? That's that's yeah. mind blowing. So they pose these questions to their god, to the traveler, the gardener, and they get no response. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now I, I could see this as being taken in a couple of ways. So they, they get no response and they could certainly take that as refusal or denial oh, sure. of their question, or they could take it as a you know again they're treating this deity with with some sort of i presume religious reverence sure um they could take that as a like you haven't experienced everything like, like the, there is still you know, more there, like as, as there is you, more as much of you've already experienced there is still more right like yeah it doesn't answer the question because the question isn't valid kind of thing yeah um and so, you know, either through that, either through not getting an answer from their deity or from believing the lack of an answer is pointing them in a, in a direction to take, they continue to research the traveler, they continue to research uh, the light, and they discover that the traveler has this connection, this other thing out there that they have decided to call the veil. And we have week three, Asa's dialogue, that tells us this. Shrouded in darkness, a promise of something more. Them discovering the veil. And I think yeah. that's where the name comes from. It was shrouded in darkness. Yeah, okay, okay. Now we're starting to get somewhere with this veil thing. Now, what Asa says here 
is really interesting. Two halves of a whole long divided, a schism between them. Okay. That seems to imply that the veil and the traveler are literally two halves of something that used to be one being. So I had kind of a thought on that. Yeah. When you look at the roots of, well, I, I call them roots. I don't know what else to call them. They, they look very root-like. Of they form the, a sphere. They form a sphere. Yeah. That would fit the fucking traveler perfectly. <laughs> it's like a glove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is is that I I don't want to say, you know, duh, but you know, <laughs> a duh. <laughs> Found it. It's right there. <laughs> there it is. Uh well, and you think about it, um, you know, the the Niamuna having the um hourglass symbol yeah. yep uh for representing the veil like same same kind of thing it it implies that a second piece or there's a there's a spot for a second piece to be yep um, fits perfectly right there <laughs> yeah so they find this veil they know it's connected to the traveler asa is saying it it was once part of the traveler um but it was it was divided long ago and a schism has formed between them so this uh, so again i i want to kind of like poke at this a little bit and and again i could just be grasping at straws i don't know um with that idea of the veil and the traveler having been a single do you want to call it an entity do you want to call it a like what what do we call this I I guess entity for lack of a better term, yeah. that, like the fact that they don't speak, like I, I don't know, maybe the, anyway. That's a, that's a, that again another like concept thing there that like I don't know what to refer to them as now. Right? Are they are they things? Are they people? Are they entities? Are they gods? Are they what are they? What do you define? How do you define these two things now? That knowing that they are now like two halves of a whole. It, it it's just it's it's genuinely kind of mind blowing, um, and then the idea of like, is it because they separated because they are now two different entities that there is light and dark, like is that the reason those two exist or was the traveler ripped out of this thing and buried in that desert, and now that it's been found, now there is now there is another half of it was 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 again thinking to the to the the unveiling books talking about the gardener and the winnower and the gardener having put light in the universe. And, and, and I know I'm jumping the gun again and I'm so sorry, myth, but um, to think of that idea of like, is it, was this done on purpose? Was this a purposeful thing? Was, was the veil literally designed to suppress the traveler to stop it from putting paracausality in this universe? Because we know that the and, and again I'm I'm jumping to the books again, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back a little bit, Beth. I'm gonna keep that idea kind of like shouldered in front of me. I literally have like one fist covering my other fist <laughs> and like the veil covering the traveler because I'm like that's how it fits. That's where it goes. There it is. So yeah. What do you keep think? all those thoughts. Yeah, keep, keep, all I'm those keeping thoughts. all those thoughts together. Um, I know we're gonna get there. I'm, I, I'm very excited, and I and I know I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. I I want to talk about that, but I want to get through the cutscene first, so we have all of the information to to start that discussion. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so they, uh, yeah, they they know about this veil. They go they go out to find it. I, uh, and this this bit is interesting. So, um. They already knew much about the light. They had literal literal eons to research it. Uh, how it how it could bend the laws of the universe and create life, because the traveler uses light to terraform. So literally creating life where there was none. Uh, they came to realize it could bring ruin just as easily. The cosmic events it set in motion could wipe out entire civilizations in a heartbeat without reason. I mean, look at look at what the warlords did with it. 
Oh, yeah. The warlords were given the light, and they literally killed whole towns, whole cities, whole just, just for the fun of it. Well, and I also think that um, that is a perfect example for how we have seen that play out. I have a sneaking suspicion that they, that what, what we call control of the light is the tiniest sliver of understanding compared to this civilization. Oh, shit. They, we've only again, had it for like, what, 2,000 years, maybe? And they've had right. it for literal eon. Like, again, billions can't comprehend that number. Billions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Holy shit. They, for them, and, and this is kind of, uh, I'm taking some of this from the mural that they show. Yep. Like, they're showing, like, supernovas and, uh, you know, giant tornadoes. And I, I think for them, it's like, this power for those that know how to truly wield it to its utmost potency can literally blink a star out of existence. I core array. <laughs> well, I, uh, but like, I, I think when they're talking about, they're like this, this light, just it's sheer energy. Even if you're not meaning to do it, just it's sheer raw energy if you do some big event, the ripples can affect the surrounding universe in ways that just destroy things. Jesus. So that's, so thinking to the mural, they had to create something to suppress it. Well, they, they definitely recognized that it was dangerous. And so the cutscene continues. They saw the light, not as a source of prosperity, but of unfettered chaos. And by studying the veil, they came to know the darkness, a power that was shaped by thought and consciousness. And in the darkness, they found the means to carve away the chaos of existence to calcify it into a final shape. So I'm going to pause there. Yeah, this, this, yeah. <laughs> Please so, do. <laughs> so they are seeing the light as pure possibility. Yep. With no direction. Which is kind of, that's kind of how we've always seen it too. And that's how we've always kind of perceived yeah. it as. It's just absolute, like where there is light, there is chaos. It's as many different possibilities as, as, as imaginable. Yeah, it is, it is pure possibility without direction. And now they're, they've studied the dark. And again, we don't know how long they studied the veil. It could be another eons. Um, and isn't that isn't that a, a crazy thought? Like <laughs> we studied, we had this thing for infinity, and then we studied another thing for another infinity. Right? Like holy <laughs> shit! But they they discovered the the ability of dark, and uh, because darkness is a power of thought and consciousness, by its definition, dark energy can only manifest when given purpose when given direction interesting i never thought of it from that perspective but that's yeah that's yeah i 10 out of 10 recommend <laughs> <laughs> so they saw light as this limitless un you know uncontrolled energy that could do anything and now they see dark as the means to contain and direct that energy. And if that energy were to create uh, a natural disaster, dark could be its opposite to prevent that energy from reaching the point that it would otherwise spell chaos or calamity. You could almost say that they could use darkness to shape how light is being used? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that—that's kind of what it alludes to. The 
you know, in the darkness, they found the means to carve away the chaos of existence, to calcify it into a final shape. So they don't want, they're like, light is too dangerous. It, it yeah. is just chaos energy everywhere. That's, that's not good. We need to cut it off, cut off its access to things. And we need to make it, we need to stop the chaos. We need to calcify it. We need to um, give it order to take on, you know, this, this one shape, you know, shape being an abstract concept at this point. So I, it then says, they brought the veil back to the gardener in an attempt to strengthen their connection. There, they could reshape reality itself. And the gardener would not allow it. And so it fled their world. But they would not be deterred. I'm going to pause there. I'm 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 honestly curious here if and again thinking thinking of the I I've got two, kind of two ideas here so we're going to go with idea 1 first thinking of the the veil and the traveler as items as things uh is the traveler actually running or is it being repelled like a magnet It's a good question um I think I I personally am under the belief that the traveler, at least the traveler, maybe the traveler and the veil, I'm starting to lean more that way, have a certain level of sentience. That was that was my second idea was are these two things sentient and the and the traveler is truly afraid of the veil and being suppressed. Because and again, I know I'm jumping ahead, thinking of the idea of the gardener and the winner and that stuff. I'm I'm no, I'm going to hold on. I promised I was going to hold on. I'm going to hold on. I promise I'm holding on, myth. We're almost there. We're, We're almost, almost there. there. I'm holding on. I'm holding on to these uh, thoughts. I, I don't think, and that's another thing, I don't necessarily think that the veil suppresses the traveler. Okay. Um, I, I think they are, they are two halves of a whole. And Do you think it is that idea of like being able to direct and control where this unfettered chaos is is being directed do you think that the veil is almost like a like a like a homing beacon or not a homing beacon like a like a what would you call that like a focusing lens of a sort yeah okay um and I, i'm going back to asa who literally said two halves of a whole yep. long divided um and i i the reason i think the traveler has some level of sentience is i there's a few lore cards I could point to, you know, the ghost that blew up uh, on Rolk and presumably was taken over by something before it did. Um, but the main thing is just the traveler has not just gotten as far away from the veil as possible, like a, a you know, polar, uh, like magnets, you know, right, pushing right. away from each other. It has gone with purpose to civilizations. Okay. okay. And it has terraformed things. You know, purposefully in, 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 in an effort to like show off, hey, chaos can be a beautiful thing. It seems to have an, an some sort of intent with those actions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think requires a certain level of, of sentience. Sure. Absolutely. But so we go back to Asa week four, where she said, uh, anathema calamity, that which cannot must not come to pass. A wordless denial, a fleeing God, betrayal and escape, the pursuit for the final shape. This is, they tried to, they brought the veil to the traveler, traveler got understood pissed. that they could, with these two connected, they could reshape reality itself and the gardener would not allow it and, and left. So that's, that's it. That's an interesting thing too. Like, the the gardener, as much as it's like terraforming and doing all this stuff, it's still kind of doing those things within the laws, not within the laws, but 
maybe, maybe within the laws of like our reality. It's not reforming reality. It's not like making it to where like I I I don't even know how to how to express that idea of a concept of reality shifting, like reshaping reality itself. The closest thing I can think to is like Alice in Wonderland, right? Like that whole di- idea of like through the looking glass is a whole nother world that exists in its own universe and it's with its own set of rules and its own set of logic and stuff. And everything in that world, the logic that they use makes sense to them. But then when you see a being that has a totally different understanding of how logic works in their world, i.e. Alice pops her head in and goes, what the hell is going on here? And that's that the, the idea of, of, the traveler still kind of operating within the guidelines of this universe, but then if the veil comes into contact with it and they're brought back together as a as a as a, a, a whole unit, now I can just be like, well, I'm going to make I'm going to make it to where gravity repels things now, ha ha, or or whatever. Like I mean, the 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 possibilities there are literally limitless the only thing that that limits them is the individuals that is using this tool's own imagination of what reality could even be so i yeah. think that i think that idea of that like the traveler saying this can't happen it, no this is bad like you think chaos is bad having the control over reality itself is worse um so yeah, so now I'm starting. I'm, I am starting to lean more towards that way, Beth, of the idea of the of the traveler having some type of sentience. Um, maybe not the veil. I'm starting to think that the that the traveler almost has all of the sentient because it doesn't seem like the veil cares. You know what I mean? It's almost it's almost and and again, I I think of it as I I I'm thinking of it in terms of like a suppressor unit, but it's not even a suppressor unit. It's a focusing unit is more what I think of it as. And the yeah. and the traveler wants to see what that chaos does when given limitless possibilities. Like it wants to see, hey, if I just give you whatever, what do you do with it? Like it's no mm-hmm. longer a question of like I'm directing you to, hey, here's here's a seed, plant it. Instead of doing that, just going, here, here's a seed. And just watching what happens. Watching what happens from the outside is just a pure observer. Like, I don't know, that's kind of like the ultimate science experiment. Yeah, it's, um, I, I'm not exactly sure where I heard this from. And it's, uh, you know, whatever you subscribe to, it's, it's just the example that's popped into my head. So apologies. Um, cause it is religious in nature, but, um, it, it, it is what you could equate to uh, a situation that, that I had, I have heard from somewhere and I can't remember where of the thought of a one God in the Christian sense, putting people on earth, giving them free will. Yeah. And hasn't the, the, the thought is that that higher being hasn't interfered with our world whatsoever. because their, their whole thing was, I have given you the ability to do whatever you can imagine and are able to accomplish on your own and whether you prosper or fall is on you not me yeah no that's i and that's very similar I'm, to, I'm to the vibe i get here percent with you on this one very much so to to give a to give a thing free will and just just sit back and go okay do you like like not not even yeah. like have fun or or don't do this or don't do that like just go like it's it's yeah i like that example i really like that example myth so needless to say and and to go back to the reality bending so uh the light is paracausal as we've said before um which means it can bend the laws of the universe the difference i think between the light and what the traveler does with its terraforming and whatnot versus the combination of the traveler and the veil, you know, re uh, rewriting reality is that the light bends the laws of the universe, but it doesn't make 
new laws. Whereas if you have the two combined and truly can make what you will of reality, you could add more laws to the universe or remove some. Dude. Maybe gravity just doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I kept thinking of like gravity repelling. Like, what if gravity just wasn't a thing? <laughs> right. Like it. It. It truly is mind boggling. The it really is the the amount of the things that could be done. Yeah. Like that is the limitless possibility. Like I, again, we say that your imagination is the only limitation, but like I don't know. The imagination is pretty damn wild sometimes. So yeah. I'd say limitless possibility. Like, at least at least with the two of them separate, with the traveler, it's just kind of like again, like regurgitating uh, tools or 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 ideas, and then just saying, okay, go with it, and you know, we'll see what happens. Whereas like this focusing lens is like now it's now it's a possibility. Now it's like I am actively re- rewriting the laws of the universe. That's yeah. just that's that's mind blowing. That's just <laughs> big big nuclear explosion brain right now so to finish out the cut scene um there is a a picture of many many bodies and the dialogue over top of it says uh, having witnessed the truth in the darkness they used its binding power to merge themselves into the salvation they craved. Thus began the witness's pursuit, its campaign to impose meaning on a meaningless universe, one that is nearly at its end. And that's the end of the cutscene. And this, in in this scene, that's where we see all those bodies, and it it literally forms up like those bodies are all calcified, um, like we see in in the in every pyramid, in every single place where there's darkness, there's those like calcified statues. Like I'm starting to truly understand, those are the people, the original mm-hmm. wanderers in the desert. That's what's left of their bodies. Those aren't we we always thought of like, hey, these are like conquered things that have now been encased and just been part of the, been drawn into the witness. No, these are literally the wanderers, the, the, what I would consider the beginning of the light and darkness journey. Um, yeah, that's kind of yeah. fucking mind blowing. And then of course it shows, uh, all those bodies kind of like leading up to the witness in his little mm-hmm. like world chamber, uh, from the third encounter in, uh, um, root root nightmares um yeah I, to to just all he wants to do and i i say he now again this kind of like shifts all all thought and everything of like what the witness is and i'm going to kind of use like this point as since since we have made it to the end of the of the scene i'm going to kind of use this as a diving off point um cuz again season well, before, deep, deep dive before you do real quick oh, let's just be very it. clear Let's just be very clear for people. The witness, as we know it, is the literal merged consciousness of this entire original civilization of people. Yes. Just just to be very clear, that's what the witness is. And the witness is not the winnower. That's where I have some thoughts. <laughs> okay, okay, because like again, we I've and I've said it here many, many times on this on this podcast. The witness is the winnower, unless proven otherwise. And I feel like I've just been proven otherwise. So I, I actually I, think I, I actually think the opposite. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. All right. Let's let's let's. I I so again using this as like a diving off point or dump jumping off point, whatever. Um, we're going to kind of go into a bunch of different ideas. Like yes. a lot of what we're going to use um, is going to be from the books of unveiling, talking about the witness and the, or talking about the, the garden, the, the garden itself, the gardener and the winnower, all of those ideas and all those concepts and everything. Um, but kind of going back to the witness himself or, or themselves, I guess it, it, 
I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to address the witness right? now. Like, I, uh, yeah. how do you address an entire <laughs> civilization in a single being? Like, if that's not sword logic, I don't know what the fuck is. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's the that's that's as that's you that's as down to one as you can get. But, Pretty much, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So all those different faces, those smoke things coming off the top of his head—that's every consciousness. I, I want to say fighting for control. Maybe I, so. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I have no freaking clue now. Um, but now we have kind of an idea of what the witness wants to do. The witness just wants to get a hold of the traveler and use the veil with it to do something. I again, still not really a true, clear picture of what he wants to do. I kind of have an idea of where this portal might lead that he opened up in the thing. Like, I'm starting to think the portal might be back to their original oasis. Like an oasis without light or dark or anything. Like almost like they're like they're they're they've been traveling this this existence for eons and now they're just trying to like be done with it. Like what what if what if we rewrite reality and saying that there was no light, there was no dark? Like oh my god. I just had an oh my god moment. <laughs> what if they rewrote reality as if there was no light and no dark? Holy shit. Well, I think that that's certainly part of it. Um, so the, the main motivation of the witness, as stated by Asa here, is to impose meaning, is to make sure that the universe does not just exist for the sake of existing, sure. but the universe and everything in it has a defined purpose that it is striving towards at all times. Sure. Because currently it doesn't. I, I mean, right now it doesn't. Like <laughs> you, you <laughs> The universe, even our universe, uh, the real universe that, that, yeah. that we as people live in, has no fucking direction. It's complete chaos. And like that's that's just that's the way energy works. Is yeah. It just it disperses. Yep. There there is no rhyme or reason or or you know, there are reactions. There are actions and reactions, but there is no grand end goal that everything is heading towards as far as like, yeah, every, every bit of energy expended is not in advancement of a cosmic end goal. Boy, this, this, this got real philosophical real <laughs> quick, man. <laughs> right. And that, that is the thing. That the that witness wants to change. It pisses the witness off, and he's just like, or they. I keep saying he. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna have to say they now because it, it's an entire yeah. civilization. It's many people. Yeah, yeah. That they are trying to create a direction, create that purpose, create. Say this. This is what it's supposed to be. This is the final shape. This is what everything has been leading towards for all of this. It, it, it for all of the eternity of existence. Everything has to lead towards this final thing. And again, shape, it, it, we keep talking about the final shape and everyone jokes like, oh, it's a hexagon. It's a, it's a cube, whatever. No. Um, shape in the terms of like where, the, where destiny, haha, uh, is leading. Like where that end goal of all of existence is. So here's, here's a fun thing. The witness, you, you could say, the witness's end goal is to rewrite reality so that everything in reality has a predetermined destiny. Boom. Witness destiny mic drop. <laughs> we're, we're, full, I, we're full of dad jokes tonight. I like it. Slightly. <laughs> but I, I do I do think like that's that's the thing. The witness sees this unfettered chaos, sees this, you know directionless just existing yeah in all directions this primordial and, blob throughout the universe right and says no yeah. this needs to mean something and if it doesn't mean anything now i will give it its meaning exactly and i think it's because of that because of them asking that unanswered question like what's our meaning okay well if you're not going to give us meaning i'm going to tell you what our meaning is yep like that's Holy shit. Dude, I'm still I'm still kind of mind blown on this whole idea of like what if he rewrites the universe to where light and dark doesn't <laughs> never existed? Like that's 
Is is that where this portal leads to? Is that where this portal says, okay, there here's the universe where light and darkness doesn't exist? Like I well, I don't think the portal goes to whatever the new universe of the witnesses because that's kind of like the question right like that's the burning question on everyone's mind is where does this portal lead and how the hell do we get through it i i have my current theory is that portal leads to a place that will allow the witness to change the universe into whatever it wants it to be whatever shape it wants it to take okay okay because i guess i guess that's an important thing too is like thinking of the veil and the and the traveler as two halves of a whole the witness didn't like go pick up the veil and like drag it over to the witness and like encase it he just kind of did like a little beam thing or no he he yeah. didn't even do a beam thing he just kind of like drew a little triangle and was like bye like yeah. so i mean again thinking of the idea of these two halves of a whole they have to be together to be the focusing lens to focus that um that light energy into doing something other than being complete chaos. I, he still hasn't done that. And if that is the true purpose of the veil um, to the traveler, then I, maybe he does need this extra space. Maybe he does need this, this other space to be able to do that. So we're going to, to we're going to take a step away from the witnesses um, objective. Okay. And talk about the Traveler in the Veil. Oh, my God. Because I think we have perhaps more information about these two things than we realize. I, th- I think you're right. So I'm going to go back to what Asa said in week uh, three. Okay. Two halves of a whole long divided. They were once connected there once one thing a schism between them the definition of schism is a split or division between strongly opposed sections or parties caused by differences in opinion or belief oh shit so that might lead to the idea of the veil having in it or being an entity having a sentience because it is a difference of opinion or belief. Okay. Okay. So two halves of a whole, they were once one thing. They were divided because of a difference in opinion or belief. Okay. They were, you know where I'm about to head with this. I'll hold that thought. So I'm holding it. When you reunited a glimpse beyond to the beginning. Now, I think I think I'm following myth. I'm we, not 100 take... percent sure anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we we take we take those. They're two halves of one whole. They had a difference of opinion, which caused them to divide from each other, caused them to split. Okay. And when you combine them back together, when you when you bring their powers back together, the first people, presumably who's is who also is talking about this wandering people that are now the witness, saw a glimpse of the beginning. I think they quite literally saw how the universe was created. Oh, so they can create their own universes. Well, I, I don't necessarily think they created anything. I think they, they saw a vision. No, no. By, by combining the two, they saw how this universe, how the destiny universe Ooh. came to be created. Right. So having seen that, they can now create universes. Right. They they saw how it you know how it how happened. it works. Yeah. Now they can be like, okay, well if that's how if that's how we do it, cool. Now I now I just need to go somewhere else to do it. Interesting. Okay. Well, and there's again uh, kind of poking at the witness a little bit. I last yeah. little poke at him. Uh, thinking back to Savathun and two truths and two lies. This, the witness was once human. I don't know if "human's" the right term. I don't. I don't remember what what she what she specifically. I think she says. I human, don't either. But she the the witness was once whatever. I, again, that was a hot second ago. Um, but holy shit, y'all don't know that Savathun's telling a single lie yet. <laughs> well, in, in I do remember in her two two truths two lies. She uh, one of them was the the lie we know now. Uh, the witness 
created the darkness. Ah. And then the other the other one was the witness was born of the darkness. The witness was absolutely born of the darkness. Yeah. He didn't create it, but he was definitely born of it. Holy shit, man. I almost want to like go through I almost want to go through all those uh two truths and two lies now, knowing what we know now, and be like, oh, okay, well shit. Well, we've proved this one, right? Or the Taken King has returned. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we fucking found him. He's right there. <laughs> so let but let's we're we're kind of like skirting around the edges of of a point that I we want are. to make here. Um so the witness is not the source of darkness. No. And in my opinion, or not even my opinion anymore, he is not the winnower. Again, this is where we disagree a little bit. Okay. Because the only thing that has ever called anything a gardener or a winnower has named anything is the witness. Oh, shit. And I, I think the witness has named itself the winnower of the universe. Oh, because shit. It is the one thing, in its opinion, the one being that is trying to winnow, is trying to whittle away the chaos yeah. to bring meaning to the universe. Okay. Okay. Well, shit. Shit. Which brings about a question. Okay. If the witness is the winnower, as we have come to know the winnower um, of our universe, let's say, who is the unveiling talking about? Well, shit. Be- because the unveiling is speaking of a time before the universe was created. So it couldn't have been... Well, maybe maybe it could have been written by the witness. Because if the if the witness did get a glimpse of how the universe was created, it I don't know, maybe maybe it could have been written by him. Or so him. I, Fuck, I keep saying I am, him. I'm gonna have I'm gonna be stuck on that for a while. This cutscene uh, is literally like changed it's it's thrown my entire <laughs> world into chaos and I my existence is just upside down and I don't I don't left is up, white is down, I don't know. So I, I'm on the same track as you though. I believe that the witnesses people were given a vision of the origins of the universe. Okay. And the unveiling book is their interpretation of what they saw. Cause how, it's, it's like seeing the face of God. Like, how do you describe that? Right. That's that. And, and for them to have written down what they, what the, cause again, you're talking, you're talking about, a, a, a civilization that existed within this universe. So everything about their existence has to kind of follow the rules and laws and physics of this universe. So to see something outside of that, and again, that's where I come back to the idea of like bending reality and sh- changing reality. Like what if light and dark never existed? What if gravity didn't exist? Like wh- that idea of seeing something outside of your understanding of how everything works is just mind blowing. It's, it's not a, there's no concreteness to it. It's, it's, it's so abstract that like everyone's going to see whatever they, they think they see or, or they interpret in their brain as seeing it's, it's, it's mind blowing. It is now. So I'm, I'm under the belief that the unveiling lore book is narrated by the witness. Okay. I, I, I believe Na- the witness narrated, wrote, quote yeah, unquote, yeah, this yep, book. Yep. Now, I think the events that happen in some of the book are where the witness has deemed themselves the winnower. Okay. I don't necessarily think every time the winnower is mentioned in the unveiling book, is it talking about the witness? Oh, so the way that I'm taking this is that the traveler is the gardener. Yep. Because the unveiling book calls it the gardener and presumably the people that gave it that name are the witnesses people. Yep. So I think who else would have named it that in the book? Exactly. I I think out of everything 
in the book and and regarding the book, that is definitely the one concrete. Like the traveler yeah. is the gardener. Whether whether the idea of a gardener in a universe outside of our universe exists or whatever, the the, the concept of the garden and the gardener definitely applies to the traveler. Now, let's 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 go on this ride here. Okay. So I'm buckled in. Click click set. An entity, a thing, existed before our before the birth of this universe. And that thing, wherever whatever space it existed in, I think unveiling is is true to form, did create multiple universes and saw all of that, you know, saw all of them follow the pattern of the flower game. Okay. Where the traveler, the gardener, in this place would instill, you know, chaos, the chaos of life. And the original winnower would, you know, would, would sweep through and, you know, anything that wasn't strong enough to survive it would die. And now, this always ended in the same pattern. Now, now is he doing that or is he it, not necessarily? Okay. So again, thinking of the idea of chaos and order, right. Rather than um, creation and destruction right. is, is the winnower in this sense, not necessarily like killing things off and saying, Oh, well this, this didn't, this wasn't supposed to exist. This one's supposed to, is, or is he just kind of looking at it as like, he's seeing all this chaos and he's trying to order it. And he's trying to bring that order to it. And whatever that order is happening, the byproduct of bringing order to this chaos is killing things off and therefore whittling it down to a single final um, perfect shape. The, 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 all the chaos has been removed from the equation and now you have an exact perfect thing. Now, this is this is where this is going to be a little difficult to try and explain. It is. Because at the core of it, I think there's two entities that have been called the winnower. Okay. I think there's the witness, which is calling themselves the winnower because okay. they believe themselves to be the winnower of our reality. Right. Having, having then, been around the traveler this long and, and having dealt right. with it and all that stuff, they, they are saying, we, we are giving it purpose. We are bringing order to this chaos. Therefore, we are the winnower. Right. And I believe that the witness slash winnower, absolutely, that is their motivation, is bringing order to chaos. Yep. The original winnower that is referenced in the beginning of the unveiling books... I don't think they had the same motivation. Interesting. I think their motivation was less personal. You think it's and, more and like I guess, primordial, like like more just kind of like a following a pattern. Yeah, and I, I guess that's the thing. In the unveiling book, the witness has attributed personalities to the gardener and the original winnower. Sure. And I don't know that that's accurate. I, I believe that the the gardener and the winnower were just. I don't necessarily think that they were beings that had like you know petty squabbles. I think these were just the primordial forces that created and destroyed universes, almost like machines. Like they ju they just kind of had a set uh, a, a set parameters that they worked within, and just kind of like did they didn't really they didn't really like oh well i'm gonna i'm gonna create a, a planet over here just because fuck you and then the other the other guy kind of comes back like well you can't do that and it kills the planet right like they're not doing that they're just like a planet is created and then whatever entities or, or not entities, whatever whatever laws or physics or whatever exists within that that planet has to be destroyed because of whatever reason there's no there's no like i'm destroying that because i don't like that planet yeah, and I, I think that's a better way to look at it. You know, the the gardener puts all of the energy that will ever exist in a universe into it. And then the winnower sets the laws of that universe, sets the laws of that reality that that energy then needs to abide by. 
Okay. And it's not necessarily that the winnower is literally coming through and killing off civilizations that are not adhering to the pattern. It's that the laws the winnower has set, the order that they have set to the chaos of the energy is just playing out. Yeah. Is just, yeah. you know, that, just that universe doing. is just happening. Yep. But then, but then when you have a civilization that can have squabbles with, within itself, um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of a, right. That's kind of a messed up thought though. Like one of the heads is like, Hey, Hey, I see you over there. You dick. Get off my ear. <laughs> like, <laughs> get out of my hair. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. So, yeah, so whatever this entity was, whatever shape it took, it was creating and watching many universes play out. And now I don't necessarily want to say they were machines. You know, they followed their, sure. their role but, but, but the way acted, they were supposed to. acted like machines. I guess, I guess, I guess that's where I needed to clarify is they were not machines, but they just kind of acted like machines. Like they right. just they were just given a set of 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 code or program or whatever, and they just followed it. Like it, they didn't they didn't have any like oh well I don't like that line of code so I'm gonna not do that code. Yeah, they they had their roles and they played their roles out for unmeasurable amount of before time eons before <laughs> eons. I uh, until until the gardener decided that they were going to add a rule which normally was the only thing that the like that was the winnower's job add the rules of the universe the gardener just put all the the you know all the puzzle pieces out in the universe and then the rules determined what what those puzzle pieces would do and then came a time where the gardener put all those puzzle pieces out in the universe and then also set a rule. <laughs> I think, I think cause it was tired of losing this game. <laughs> yes. Like that's, it was tired. It was tired of seeing universes end the same way over and yeah, over. Yeah. It was just boring. It was, I, I think that's, I think that's more of the, more of the thing. Like if we're yeah. thinking of these things in, in terms of entities, like entities that are just doing what they do, an entity in theory would get bored eventually, I would think. And so for the, for, eons upon eons before eons were were eons to have this gardener to be like okay well you're creating rules i want to make one well i'm gonna make this rule paracausality <laughs> and the, the winner is like hold the fuck on here you can't you can't do that so exactly so uh and this is this is again i'm drawing from the unveiling in particular the final shape chapter yep um where there's this like discussion between the two about like, Oh, it always ends the same. And you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to add a new rule. Uh, literally it says, I'm going to do something. We need a new rule is what the gardener says in, in that yep. chapter. Uh, and so I, I think essentially that that's what happened. The gardener put a new rule into the universe, which is light. But I guess, I guess that's the question. Like, did he tell the other entity what rule he put in? Well, we'll never know. That's that's like, kind of like the question. Well, like, like I, I think of like two siblings. Like, like me and my brother would like come up with like random rules to this game that we just made up, and like, hey, you're not touching base. Well, base is this thing over here, so suck it. But like, yeah. I don't know that that's base. You just made that base up in your head. Like, you're making up your own rules. So like, I'm curious if the if the gardener introduced this rule and just never told the winnower and just like, let's see what happens. Like, <laughs> it's kind of messed up, so, but yeah. A little bit. Um, so they, they, the gardener instills this rule, which is light. The winnower tries to correct by instilling their own rule, their own new rule, which is dark. Yep. I think that, that is the schism okay. that Asa is referring to. This, this was one entity that, you know, that existed and and part of it would do one and part of it would do the other. And then this is the schism between these two entities, between these two, I guess you could say personalities. Cause I'm not really sure what else to say. Sure. That caused them to split. Okay. And so I think the original winnower is the veil. Yeah. I'm, I'm again, the, the, the witness people calling the veil, the winnower, 
or, or calling for a winnower and then finding the veil. I I I think that's too um, that's too direct to not make that connection yeah. there to not say the veil is the original winnower. Um, because again, thinking back to what the idea of the traveler, if the traveler is the original witness and this is two halves of a whole, the veil has to be the other half of that. And therefore, right. because of that logic, the veil has to be the gardener or the, the winnower. Sorry. Yeah. So I, the, a few, a few truths I think we can pull out of this just to, to try and, you know, summarize. Okay. Traveler is the gardener. Check. The gardener and the veil used to be one entity. Check. Which implies that the veil is the original winnower. Check. They existed as this one entity before time itself and crea- created universes and watched those universes play out to their end. Okay. Until the gardener instilled a new rule. The winnower then instilled their own rule to try and balance it out. And what happened was our was the destiny universe and the the conflict between those two sides split that one entity into two. Which yeah. is where, you know, the witnesses people found the traveler, who knows how long it'd been there. Yeah. Um, and then eventually found the veil. Yeah. So all this checks out by combining the two of them together, you are bringing back the original power to shape universes. Yeah. Hence the create new realities or change the current reality. I guess that's the question too, is like if they bring them together within our reality, what happens to our reality like, right. D- does our reality just instantly start getting rewritten within itself? Like what's I think our reality ends. Oh shit. Because Asa that, says that at the end quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well what what Asa said at the end of the cutscene, um, thus began the witnesses pursue its campaign to impose meaning on a meaningless universe, one that is nearly at its end. Oh shit. Now, I suppose you could say, does she mean its our, campaign is nearly at its end or, or the universe, universe is yeah. nearly at its end? <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> so well, I, I guess good. you could argue either way for sure. Um, but I, I don't think whatever it is, I don't think it's good for us. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, Man, this is this is I'm telling you, this cutscene and all of these things that Asa is saying, like. Th- this is. This is the biggest piece of info we've ever had, ever. Like, this opens so many doors and ideas to the the light and dark everything. Like, this is truly mind-blowing, Myth. It is. And another bit here uh, regarding unveiling uh, is that when... So you you start out unveiling, okay, and it taught the very first chapter is pleased to meet you, and it's essentially a little intro about uh, sword logic and like the the darkness cutting away suffering by not allowing those that shouldn't be alive to be alive, um, and essentially, uh, what I got from from the first chapter is the witness, and I think this is the witness. Um, has decided it is their purpose to bring an end to a universe run off of chaos, run off the chaos of light, and that by doing so, they will eliminate all unneeded suffering in the world, because oh, they well, see that. A, it's like a Thanos style. Yeah, they see that that uh, that 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 directional chaos as doing nothing but bringing pain and suffering. Yeah. Um. I, I, yeah. Okay. So maybe Witness not so bad guy? Well, Witness doesn't <laughs> think they're such a bad guy. <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference there between yeah. me thinking he's not so bad guy and he actually still being kind of bad guy. <laughs> so I, I want to, to highlight a specific section in this chapter where they say, Imagine the abomination 
of a world where nothing can end and no choice can be preferred to any other. Imagine the things that would suffer and never die. Imagine the lies that would flourish without context or corrective. Imagine a world without me. That's the end of that section. Okay, well now I'm starting to think that the witness has just been alive for so damn long. It's just tired. I think the witness is just kind of fucking full of themselves. That's that's could be part of it. Is where I'm at. That could be part uh, of it. So to to draw on that that idea. So the very next chapter, the gardener and the winnower and the flower game. I am of the opinion that these are probably the only two chapters in unveiling that we can more or less take as 100% true or okay. close to it. As as like this is the vision that was given to yes, the wandering civilization. The reason I say that is because Gardner and Winnower and the Flower Game, those two chapters, are referring to the Gardner and the Winnower both in third person. Okay. As if the they are always, observing Like the witness something would be else. referring to itself and would say, I, whereas in right. these two chapters they're saying, the Gardner did this, the Winnower did that. Right. Okay. And we see in the very... I, in the very next chapter titled the final shape the perspective changes and okay. they're no longer saying the winnower said this or the winnower did this now it is i said this i did this okay so that's kind of the original idea of like the witness is the winnower but now it's now it's the, with the with with the understanding of where the witness came from, I'm thinking you're you're more or less correct. Uh, no, I, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to say you are correct, that the witness has just named itself the winnower and said, yeah, I, I, I will be the bringer of, of, of order. I will be the ender of chaos. Like if, if, but again, I, I think of that in terms of like, if, if the wanderers had never found the traveler, like let's, let's, let's kind of take it like a what if scenario here. If the wanderers yeah. had never, had never found the traveler, would they have all just died? I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, they probably would have yeah. eventually just died, and then that would have been the end of it. Like, boom, destiny's over. <laughs> like, <laughs> ended that destiny never started. <laughs> exactly, ended that shit real quick. Um, so, in that sense, is it, because we we know that like with the golden age, it extends your lifespan, and so like we we think of like the Elixni people who. Some of these people have been around for a hot freaking second, um, as well as like uh, um, humanity. Like it keeps bringing shit back to life and going. Okay, now you've got new purpose. Now you're an army. Um, it is would would the the witness be looking at that and going because I've lived for eons and eons and eons and eons. I'm just tired of living. Like I I as the as the wandering people want to end i i want to be i i want to be done like i'm just tired so i as, and again this is kind of kind of thinking of it in a dark way but it, like is the witness's goal like ending of itself i don't necessarily think it's trying to find a way to like commit suicide right like that's like the dark half of it is like it's right. just lived for so long it's just tired of living and just been like i just want to I'm just, I'm done. I'm bent. I'm, I'm spent. I'm burned out. I, I just, I need a way out. I need a release or something. I absolutely get where you're coming from with that. Yeah. I don't get that vibe from anything they have done though. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, I understand how that might happen and me a different character that's has similarly long lived. Like that could absolutely be a storyline. Sure. But I think the witness is they're they're not tired and as sloan said they're just pissed angry Un, unfettered like, cold rage like yeah. oh because they were never given the purpose right oh okay. because their 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 so the question is, is still unanswered still unanswered yeah yeah okay 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 yep i'm following now 
I'm following. I still, I still have that one little inkling in the back of my mind that's like, well, maybe they're just tired and they're they just want to end it. Like they just they've been around for so long that they're just tired. But that oh, idea yeah. of like we asked this question, why we when we discovered you in the desert and you you gave us everything, but then when we asked, you know, after millions and billions and trillions of years, now what? You sat silently. So, WTF traveler? Like, or, or I, I guess in their case, WTF gardener, um, and then the gar- and then the gardener being like, and that's it. Like <laughs> just silence. Like you know, like that's that's it. <laughs> so yeah, I could see where that un- that unfettered cold rage could come from. Oh yeah, and I think you pair that with, um, the the denial of a response. Yep. And then you pair that with kind of the theme of the season, honestly, and that is to be obsessed with a mission. Oh, you know, Sloan says it herself that if, if she didn't have the, like the mission gave her purpose, survival was her purpose. That's what kept her going. And her, her whole story arc was like when the mission's done, I don't know who I'll be anymore because that's all I have. Do do you know how many like military vets go through that when they, when they leave the military? Like when she said that, I was like, bro, I get (laughs) you. I I got you fam. I know what that feels like. So yeah, I can, I can see where that, like, you know, the mission is everything. And then once you get to the end, like, now what? What is my purpose? What do I do? Yeah. Now, what if the mission that gave you purpose, that you self-decided was your purpose for existing, that mission was to recreate the universe to give everyone else purpose? And that's that's the witness. That's fucking mind-blowing, man. That's... <laughs> I can't, I genuinely can't fathom that. Like, I can't, I, 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 I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around that concept of an entire civilization deeming itself the purpose, the, the bringer of order and the bringer of purpose to all creation to then just, that is their own purpose. And once that purpose is reached, then what? You know, you're still kind of left <laughs> with this question of then what? Like, is that it? Is that the end? Like, that's the witness just ceases to be then like, okay, I've reached my goal. Bye. I mean, maybe so. And (laughs) well, and I I think I think that's the thing, though, is like. And and again, Sloan said this as well. What's scarier than pushing forward with the mission is the is even thinking about what happens when it's done. Yeah. And like, but, but so if, guess, if that in, mission is what keeps you going, then you, you're still, you're still you doing still, it. You still have drive. You still have a, a purpose, a yeah. direction of, uh, of, so I guess in that sense, like, do you, do you think the witness doesn't know what to do? Do you think he's scared? I think so. And I think he's angry that yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't angry. have yeah. the power to, to, you know, know what comes next or to even or to, give itself purpose. Oh my right. God. It can't even give itself purpose. Because the universe it exists in and came from is inherently meaningless. I'm, I'm, what the fuck? And what's interesting is if you look at everything the witness has done when it's interacted with another species or, or specifically its disciples, it's to give them purpose. Yeah. For Rulk, it was to give Rulk, you know, vengeance Some, and then do, yeah. and then, you know, purpose as like the witness's right hand man. For the hive, it was to give the hive, you know, longer lifespans, and then their purpose was to continually feed their worms. Holy shit. And and since that purpose is the only thing that drives them, they have to feed their worms for all eternity. Right. It's no longer and, and we always talked about the worms as being like an energy train, right? Like feeding that energy somewhere. Like 
Oh my God, dude, this is like the, the witness's whole MO has been find a particular species or usually person within that species that is lost and does not, does not have meaning is wandering and give them a goal, give them a thing to strive for. And that's, that's just what it's trying to do on a cosmic scale. I, I'm, I, I've lost words, myth. <laughs> this is really fucking with my brain. I, it's I, a lot of very like abstract. It really is stuff. I for love sure. it. I absolutely love it. Like this is the shit that like makes me want to play Destiny on a daily basis. Like this is the shit that like, well, what if impossibility is possible? What if? What if? What if? Like just what if? Like, holy shit, man! I don't know, man. I don't know whose side to take now. I don't know. Do do I keep following the travel, or is the witness just doing his job? Like, I can't fault the witness for doing it. Carl did his job. <laughs> I, I think in regards to the witness, it's not necessarily whether you agree with their ideology or not. It comes down to, is the thing they're trying to do going to make me not exist? If, if yes, I'm going to want to stop that. <laughs> it's, it's a simple flow chart. It's just a two part yeah. flow chart. It, does, does witness affect my existence? If yes, stop witness. If no, who cares? Like Pr- pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. A little two part flow chart there. I like it. So Holy the, shit, the other, man. Th- the other thing that I wanted to, to point out, um, you, you had said like an entire civilization deciding they, they, should be the ones to instill purpose. Yeah. Based on the visuals in that cutscene, I don't know if it was the entire civilization that know, voluntarily man. decided this. I was like, going to say, I think a lot of these people were either dragged in or just murdered off. Cause there's like, as yeah. much as we see like fallen bodies that are then mangled into those statues throughout the, 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 the witnesses ship and, and all the other pyramid ships that we see and anything that has to deal with darkness. Um, there's a lot with like no arms and like no heads and like no legs. And I'm pretty sure you need all of those, but I don't know. I've never combined an entire civilization into one being. (laughs) So maybe you don't need arms and legs and a head. I don't know. (laughs) Well, and Asa in week one specifically says, uh, that the nomads were the first to fall victim to the witness, the first to be claimed by the deep, which victim that word oh, yeah. makes me think that not everyone Un- was okay unwilling. with the whole mind merge thing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but they it just happened whether they wanted it to or not so okay so you know what i'm about to do then so so jill is sitting over here minding her own <laughs> business <damn> <laughs> you know you know it's gonna happen jill's just sitting here jill the wanderer they've come across this this the, the, this wandering people have come across this glorious seed this traveler this this gardener creating life and and has has given them life in this oasis and while they're chilling in this oasis after millions and billions and trillions of years jill is just sitting there on a park bench feeding the birds and jimmy comes over and says hey we're going to merge all of our consciousness consciousnesses together. That's a hard word. Consciousnesses together into one being. And we're going to call ourselves a witness. You in? And Jill's like, um, no. And the other guy's like, too bad. <laughs> and that's it. Game over. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's about how that conversation went, word for word. Yeah, that's that's it. That's that's now now you have the origins of the witness. Yep. Poor Jill. Poor Jill. So yeah, there was one last little tidbit that is not related to the witness in particular. I, I, when I when she said it, I lost my <laughs> shit, man. I lost it. So week six, the final week, Asa tells us this. The true path lies obscured, but she knows the way. She who hides truth in deception. 
the witch queen must rise. And that's the end of that one. Boom! Awesome mic drop. So I'm just going to put it out there right now. Myth and I literally predicted this. Like we said that the that Savathun is going to have to be risen and be an ally. We we like if, if you haven't if you haven't felt, if you haven't if you hadn't come to that conclusion, you've been playing the wrong game or you haven't been paying attention. That's just what it is. Um I'm I'm 900% sure next season we're going to have uh we're going to have the Savathun as our ally. Like Daddy, D- Daddy Edgelord Maru is just gonna come waltzing <laughs> in, and we're gonna be like, "Hey, bro!" And he's like, "Sup, bro?" And we're gonna be like, "Hey, um, can you bring Savathun back? We kind of need her knowledge." And he's gonna be like, "I don't give a shit, bro. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna do it because I want to do it." You neon nerds. And that's 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 what's gonna happen. So I do expect that next season will be getting Savathun back. I don't know that it's going to be quite that simple. It's going to be but, that simple. Uh, one week, one week mission. <laughs> I, I, when, when she said that, I lost my shit. I was a little confused during that scene, though. Um, so obviously she's, she's. <laughs> there was one kind of like central theme of this season is all the Titans doing the Titan thing on Titan because they're Titans. Uh, <laughs> literally, it's yeah. Zavala, uh, the Saint Fourteen, Sloane. Uh, Saladin, like there are no other classes being represented here. Like the Drifter's there, but they just put Drifter on like, like basically like bench duty. They're like, yeah, tell the Guardian where to go. Like do whatever. We don't care. We're holding in line. Like I don't know. That's uh, Titans are so Titan. I love you guys, but you're so Titan. You're 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 Titan beyond your own reasons. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it it um. In that scene, she's holding she's holding crown. Sp- how do how do I say it? Crown spitter, um, uh, the the Titan sword, and and she's she she like flips out. Is that is that Zebu Wrath talking through her? Yeah, I took that as Zebu Wrath possessed her, like took control for a period it. of time. Yeah, which kind of scares the shit out of me. Like the fact that like I I get it because she's partially taken. So like right, presumably that. You know, tuning into darkness, darkness radio, K K. What, what would that be? K D R K. You don't, you don't think they have like that smooth jazz voice? No, they're probably literally broadcasting the sea of screams. Yeah, that's, I was just thinking that, that they're all just screaming. Oh shit! I was, I was, I created a thing and I wasn't ready for the creation myth. <laughs> So yeah, like I, I guess that's that's kind of like a thing to keep an eye out for. Like if something is even partially taken, it's tuned into darkness frequencies and can therefore be used as a conduit. So maybe keep an eye on Sloane. Like I get that the mission is done, but maybe keep an eye on her. Yeah. 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 Although she does overcome it. So she does. Know. So I, I and again, she even says so. Uh, in the very first week when like Drifter comes up on her and she's like, whoa, we need to kind of take care of her. No wonder she called in sick. Um, and she's like, no, 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 not me. I'm fine. And everyone's like, yeah, you, you're what now? <laughs> but she even says that like, like her light is helping suppress it. So it's definitely a struggle. Um, yes. but the light's helping. So make sure, make sure her ghost sticks around. Okay. So yeah. That's uh that's kind of the end of our episode on the witness and the unveiling. Yeah. I I I think that this season has been fantastic. Like the story here has been super important. And then there's also like this I don't know if anybody's ever has ever has noticed it or not and Myth actually had to show it to me. There's a little secret story happening this whole season. Mm-hmm. And it's on Niamuna in the bottom left hand corner of the map. There's a little node that you can click on, and you go there, and it's super simple. You literally walk in there, walk three feet forward, walk to a console, and hit activate. And it like you can pile up all these messages together and like do them all one after another in a single sitting. Um, but they're all about um, Niamuna and Maya Sundaresh and their logs of Maya's wife, and they just kind of give a little bit more thing there. Like there's, there's a lot there and it's, it's, it's mainly about Niamuna as a whole and like kind of how Niamuna came to be. And, um, 
yeah, it's I I I'm loving Lightfall. I'm I'm loving Lightfall as a whole. Again, there you can look at individual pieces and be like, oh, well, I didn't like that so much, or oh, this doesn't make sense, or why this, or why that. But looking at it as a whole and being told, hey, we're getting there. Like, be patient. Like, I I mean, hell, I said it in this episode. I have to learn to be patient myself. Like. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I'm excited to get to the end. That's why I can't read books. Because and Myth yells at help everyone yells at me for this. I go to a bookstore, pick up a book, and read like the last chapter first while I'm standing there to decide if I want to read the book or not. And then everyone yells at me. Um, As so, yeah. they should, you <laughs> monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so so we did it. Uh, we uh, we we. I think we've pretty well broken down the the traveler the witness the veil the the sloan or the asa the taken the every i i don't know man this was a lot to unpack and uh, and it was i think we did our best uh mitt do we have any shout outs yes we do so we've got uh, a number of shout outs uh which having a week break to collect them certainly didn't didn't hurt yeah um but yeah so well, first, first off, one, th- thank you all for listening to us through through the week yes. break. It's, <laughs> it's always scary when we do it, when a content creator takes a break and like, hey, we're taking care of personal life. Please be for your force when we get back. So thank you for sticking <laughs> with us. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, but yeah, so first shout out for the for the evening comes to us from uh, Nicholas Edmonds, um, who says. Uh, hey guys, just sending this to say thanks. I've been playing since since uh, Taken King, and I started listening to you guys three weeks ago after not playing since Red War. Just finishing up the Cabal history and love how you go off on tangents. I do the same thing, like, wait a minute, that might mean this, and if that means this, then that might also be because of that. Uh, listening to Welcome you guys... Welcome to the has... inside of my brain. <laughs> yeah. Listening to you guys has renewed my light and have... Uh, and I've just gotten Lightfall. I will be getting the uh, uh, I will be getting the other three. I'm trying to catch up on the pod so you can explain what's going on and why. It... <laughs> yeah. Uh, signed your Solar Titan from south of the Hawksbury Sea, home of the fighting Darug warlocks. I don't even so, know what that means. Did you do some research? I did. So this is a fun little reference to a ship. Uh, entitled the Woomera B-5. What the fuck? Um, the Woomera B-5 ship uh, has a couple of references all to Australia. Okay. Uh, Woomera is apparently a spear-throwing device used by aboriginals. Um, oh, shit. I and... saw that on one of the... I, I'm thinking of an episode of Top Shot where they did something with that. It's almost oh, like, maybe. no, atlatl. I'm thinking of an atlatl. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. Well, uh, the other reference there, um, the fighting Darug, I think that's, I'm maybe butchering that. But, We're so uh, sorry if we are. So the fighting Darug refers to the indigenous Darug people of uh, New South Wales. And the Hawkesbury Sea refers to the Hawkesbury River in the same part of Australia. Well, so, shit. I think that is a very lore conscientious way of saying that. That was fucking cool. That was cool as shit. Yeah. You made us do homework. Get the fuck <laughs> out. That's awesome. Yeah. So that, that makes me cool. that makes me smile. That gives me that warm fuzzy feeling on the inside. That's... You made Myth do homework. I say we. You made Myth do homework. <laughs> <laughs> I make Myth do homework all the time. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Uh, but I'm only going to thank Nicholas for it. Oh, uh, <laughs> fair enough. So I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying things and that we're able to get you, you know, reinvigorate that, that kind of love Abs- for the game. Absolutely. Uh, Red, the, the period, I, I say it all the time. The period after the red war was a dark time, my friends. Yes. Uh, yes. It, 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 it definitely had a, <laughs> there was a rough patch to get through. Uh, but yeah, if you can make it through the other side, it's, it's. I think it's worth it. I've I've had a blast with this game. I've, I'm the same way. I started with Taken King. Uh, I've got the Taken King PlayStation. That was where I that was where I jumped into PS4 off of PS3. Um, so yeah, I I fell in love with it then, and that's that. <laughs> it's been nonstop. Yeah. 
Uh, so second shout out comes to us uh, from Twitter this time around. Uh, they say, uh, this is Adam Armstrong, who says, I've been meaning to let you guys know how amazing you're doing. I listen on Spotify, so I can only give you the, the stars, uh, but you are the third podcast I've found and certainly one of the best. I can't wait uh, till you do the Dredgen slash Shin story. Keep it up. Can't wait for more. Guess what? <laughs> You're not going to have to wait very long. <laughs> Guess what? So we were so, using this week as kind of like a getting back into the swing of things week. Mm-hmm. And we're going to start something special next week. Yeah. So uh, just keep keep an eye out if you've been looking yeah. for the, the Dredgen story. So I'm so excited. It's another one that like I know like I know enough to be dangerous and to fuck up the lore. Mint knows everything <laughs> about it. So <laughs> Yeah. It'll be a good one. It'll be a long one. Yes. It'll be a good one. Well, thank you for the five stars on Spotify as well. Like we know yes. that there's that thank you. It's hard to get a, a a word response in through there, but yeah, I mean we, hell, I think the other day we checked we were at like five a five point oh with like two hundred plus rating. Like that's that's insane. That's yeah, nuts. That's, that's cool. That's super cool. I didn't I didn't know that could happen. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, I didn't like, think that that could happen. Like as soon as you, <laughs> like in in my head, the way that math works, like as soon as you get something that isn't a 5, it should drop down, but I don't I guess we've just never gotten anything less than a 5. So Maybe not. I don't know. Thank you. I I, yes. I don't know what else to say. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So moving on, we have another one that comes to us. Uh, this one from Apple Podcast Reviews. Uh, someone that left a very kind five star review there. Uh, this is username Big Munch. Yeah, uh, <laughs> who uh, who just says love this show. Keep it going, guys. I love that I can learn about all of the new lore. Well, so thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. Say, so, I'm I am glad that you are enjoying learning about it. Yeah. Uh, we have another one from uh, the Apple Podcast Review. Another very kind five star review uh, from a user titled "A Lore Hungry Guardian." Nom 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 uh, nom 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 nom. <laughs> uh, they say, "I don't know where I would be without y'all's lore breakdowns." Until I started listening, I was really into it, but didn't know where to start or how to keep up. But you make it easy and fun. I love the storytelling and your series diving into particular sections or subjects. Keep up the great work. I I love it. This this year this year has been kind of like a renewed focus for us too. Of like, I want to cover huge topics, but then like have little topics within them. Like the entire Bray series, that mm-hmm. was that's that I think that's our longest series. Um, I don't know if that was longer than the Awoken. The I've, Awoken the Awoken went for yeah. fucking ever. <laughs> they got yeah, a lot I've, of lore. I feel like our Bray series, if you took it in its totality, um, like all of the individual pieces yeah. of it, I think is is our longest. Um, but, you know, we did kind of the, it was all the Bray series, but this section is Clovis and this section yep. is Elsie and this section is, you know, Rasputin and, and whatnot. So. That, was, that one was a lot of fun to do. I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing that. And again, yes. I, I love these long storytelling sessions. I, I love being able to, to, to share uh, what myth has found. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I love being able to share what myth has done research on. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's I, 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 again, I love a good story. I, I grew up, uh, my dad would always tell stories all the time. His was always, you know, back in the seventies, blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, we, we're, I'm convinced that the seventies was a lot longer than it actually was. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it it uh yeah, I I love a good story and and it, Destiny is full of stories, tons of stories, relatable ones, non-relatable ones, like stories in games, stories that deal with real life life uh uh um events and trauma and stuff like that. Like I I love it. I freaking love it. Yeah. But uh say so that's it for the shout-outs for for this episode, but if you uh liked what you heard and Feel strongly enough, you can leave a review on your platform of choice. Uh, you know, just uh, a couple stars is uh, always really appreciated. Um, if you feel super strong about it and you want to leave a text review, if your platform allows it, 
please feel free to do so. We like looking through those. Uh, and if you'd like to reach out, uh, you can reach us on Twitter at Myths and Stories Z instead of an S. Uh, and we go through that as well. And you may hear yourself as a future shout out. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I guess it's time for my thank yous. We, we already know who we're thanking. I'm not thanking Jimmy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> that guy's insane. I have nothing good to say about you, Jimmy. Um, stop trying to end the universe. Please, we live here. We live here. Please stop. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Thank you, Jill, for trying to resist the witness. That's that's all you can do. Let's just try. Try your best. Also, thank you, KDRK. <laughs> Darkness Radio. <laughs> <laughs> smooth smooth sounds of the sea of screams <laughs> <laughs> all right well you got anything else smith no that's it all righty well then from all of us lore nerds and lore daddies to all of you guardians out there we'll see you next time <laughs>